Hey friends, what is up? Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to 2021. My name is Sarah from Pies and Pros and if you are new here, welcome again. <laughs> I am the creator of Pies and Pros on Instagram, here on YouTube, on a blog, Patreon, and just all parts of the internet. <laughs> but I post about books, vegan lifestyle and food, sustainability, minimalism, and just overall lifestyle. So if you're interested in that, stick around and hit subscribe whenever you like. Today, we are talking about my first official year as a vegan. So I went vegan in 2019 in January. I, t I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience in the past year, uh, the pros and cons, things that I've learned, and I also wanted to share some vegan staples that are really important and critical in my personal lifestyle. Hopefully this video will give you some insight into what it's like to be a really new vegan as myself, as opposed to the more seasoned and veteran vegans here on YouTube, which they are fantastic. And if you are participating in Veganuary or you're interested in knowing more about Veganuary, let me know in the comments. We'll have a conversation. We can definitely talk about it. Uh, I'm excited for you if you are getting started on Veganuary or if you've already started since it's already been a few days into January. And with that, let's get on with this video. So to preface my experience in this past year, I want to quickly talk about why I went vegan in the first place. I have been experimenting with vegan food and the vegan lifestyle for many years, actually. Um, I remember just, you know, going into the grocery store and seeing these options and thinking, wow, that's, a, that's really cool to, that there are options. Of course, at the time when I first discovered vegan alternatives, uh, it was very brand new, so you might see one or two in the grocery if you're lucky, and you know, you'd pick them up, you'd give them a try, and they were not good. So uh, that's, that's to preface where I really, really was introduced into vegan, vegan food and veganism. Uh, now in 2019, I was exposed to a lot more information. I'm seeing the world change and I was just really curious to know more about the environment, how I could participate in my own personal life that could possibly benefit or help. And I've been I was seeing a lot of documentaries blow up on Netflix and what have you, Game Changers and uh, Cowspiracy. But the one that really, really got me on top of those, because those were extremely, extremely helpful. They're my top three. But the number one documentary for me was What the Health. That just completely changed and opened my eyes to a whole other side of what is going on in society and the environment and health. That is what really pushed me over the edge. At the end of 2019, I was like, you know what? 2020 is my year, I'm gonna go vegan, and that's that. I've made that decision. And so January 2020 came, and that's exactly what happened. I went vegan. I will give credit to those years in the past where I would spot one or two vegan options in the grocery store as part of my journey, but I will say that come January 2020, when I decided to go vegan, I went vegan overnight. I just completely made that switch, and it was... It was an easy switch for me. I know a lot of people say that it's extremely difficult and I'm sure it is extremely difficult. It took Ian a little bit longer. And Ian is my husband, by the way. Uh, it took him a little bit longer to adjust to the idea that he would go vegan. But for me, I just, you know, like I did it. And that was that. And I will say that the reason why it was so easy for me to go vegan overnight is because there are so many plant-based options in, in this country in 2020, if not the entire world in 2020. So it was, it was really easy to switch because there was so much that I can easily turn to that was plant-based. I will also say that the documentaries was the number one reason that pushed me into becoming vegan. But I will also say that at the same time when I was watching these documentaries, I was watching a lot of YouTube videos of vegan YouTubers who were, you know, they're, they're crushing the game here in the vegan YouTube community. And they, it, they helped me a lot. <laughs> they, 
really helped me so, so much. They made it more approachable. So the documentaries gave me my why, my reason why I really wanted to become vegan. But these YouTubers and these YouTube videos here that still exist on the internet was my way of seeing veganism as an approachable thing to do. So the combination, it just made things so easy for me and and then the plant-based options everything was just it was set up for my success i am so incredibly grateful for that so i do want to give credit to all of that i am vegan for the animals i am vegan for my health and i am vegan for the environment all of the things getting that quick little story out of the way um i want to talk a little bit about positives and negatives of going vegan in the past year. So let's start with positives and end off with the, the negatives. So positives, um, I just feel so fantastic, not just physically, but emotionally and mentally. I feel good physically because I feel like my health has improved drastically. I will say, and this is 100% transparent and fact and true about my personal experience, this has nothing to do with anyone else's experience, in the years prior to going vegan, I was having serious issues with food and my diet and my health. The foods that I was eating was damaging my body. I was feeling lethargic. I couldn't do basic tasks. I lost self-esteem. There was just a lot of different things going on physically to my body that was not good. And the biggest thing was being lethargic and feeling gross inside. I don't know how else to explain that. And apologies for the obnoxiously loud airplanes. I just felt icky inside. I don't, I, I'm sure those who have experienced it know what I'm talking about, but it's, it ties into that lethargy where you just feel meh. You don't have energy to do anything. You don't care to do anything. You don't want to do anything. And you just fall into this rut, into this cycle of just feeling like crap all the time. Yeah, I was in a bad place and my diet was really affecting my mental health, my physical health, and I needed change. In 2019, I was experimenting. I started swapping out different meats and what have you, but in 2020, when I completely cut out meats, there was a drastic change. And I won't say that it was an overnight change. It took a couple of months to feel that change, but there was. Uh, no more lethargy. I was not feeling tired. I wasn't having stomach aches. That's another thing. I was having a lot of stomach aches and I was having more stomach aches than not in a, in a given week. Uh, those went away. Um, I didn't have issues going to the bathroom. I didn't have issues with feeling lack of energy despite the common misconception is that you don't eat enough when you're vegan so you're going to lose energy but that was not the case. I was having full energy. Uh, I could do things. I cared about doing other things. My self-esteem came back a little bit. I did lose weight, not significant amount of weight, totally fine with. The self-esteem came from feeling good and just <laughs> not feeling sick and tired anymore. So that is a huge positive that came out of this entire 2020 when it comes to going vegan. Another positive is not just on my physical and mental health, but also feeling like I'm doing a part in this society by giving back, by not contributing to harmful and negative companies, corporations, putting harm onto animals. I care about the planet and I care about animals and, you know, really putting that into action with my own day-to-day -day choices. Again, this is all personal experience. This has nothing to do with anyone else and I'm not calling anyone out and I'm not judging anyone whatsoever. But personally, that is how I felt in the past year. It felt great. <laughs> it was a good feeling and it still is a fantastic feeling. Another really great positive that came out of going vegan is that I eat more vegetables and I eat more fruits. I eat more plants. And this is something that I was struggling with for a very long time. Uh, deep down inside of me, I always wanted to eat plants. I always wanted to eat vegetables and fruits, but I wouldn't incorporate them into my meals. I would just get McDonald's or I would just order takeout or go to a restaurant and just neglect that whole section of my diet that I actually did want to work on and just was just not dedicated enough to actually do it. And I will say that I eat so much more vegetables and fruit now that I am vegan. Y you kind of have to when you go vegan because it's a huge part of, of the 
the meals that you make. Uh, but I'm just glad that I finally did that. I'm really, really glad that I am now at a place where I love vegetables, I love fruits, I want them in every single meal that I have, and not gonna lie, now that Ian is also vegan, he loves vegetables, and I think his... I think his progression in terms of eating vegetables and fruits is far more impressive than me. He was someone that refused to eat vegetables, did not like vegetables, and was proud to say it. And if I tried to put a vegetable on his plate, he'd be like, what is the point of that? And now he loves vegetables. Really proud of him, and that's another positive to me, is just having my partner be able to eat a healthier and vegetable forward and plant forward diet. Uh, it makes me so happy to see him um, growing as well. Now moving on to the cons, the negatives that came out of me going vegan in the past year. And there are a couple. One of them is ordering out, basically ordering food. And I will say this is not an issue 99% of the time. In New York City, you can get plant-based options everywhere. You can find vegan-centric restaurants everywhere. But I will say in the beginning of going vegan, when I was allowed to go out and I was going out with friends, it would sometimes be hard to accommodate both of us at the same time. Of course, if I'm going to a vegan restaurant and I want like 100% vegan options, easy. But I have non-vegan friends and they wouldn't want to go to a 100% vegan spot. They'd want to go to our go-to places that we would always go to when I wasn't vegan. Finding options at some places is not impossible, for sure. I've always been able to order something, but I will say they aren't the best options everywhere. So, for example, in some places you could probably get like the most basic of basic dish prepared for you, like uh, pasta with tomato sauce or something on the side like fries with ketchup or something very very basic and I'm a foodie I love food very much so I don't like to go for the basic options and having the basic options be the only options that are vegan is sometimes difficult for me to process <laughs> um, it was a little annoying to not be able to order something really fun and interesting and new because the place that we would go to didn't accommodate that for vegans. It's a really, really subtle con and it doesn't happen anymore because I do not go out to eat anymore and when I order takeout it's usually from a 100% vegan spot, so not really an issue, but that was an issue for some time. I will say that I would try to combat that con by bringing my own items to sort of zhuzh up the meal, and I did do that for some time. It would kind of be annoying because I wasn't sure if the restaurant would allow me to do that or it would be sort of inconvenient to bring a huge bag with like stuff. Um, of course, this is not an issue anymore, but I do wanna mention it uh, in case it is applicable to anybody out there. <laughs> the second con, and I only have two cons, but this second one is the biggest one for me as a negative, as a con. And it is the reaction and the interactions and the conversations that I have to have with family and friends and yeah, with family and friends about me going vegan. I received a lot of negativity. I had a lot of family members and friends judge me, um, attack me, tease me, make fun of me, um, just belittle me to every single point that you can possibly think of uh, to a point of questioning and interrogating me when I would take out a meal to eat to, you know, Whenever they would be discussing something, they would be like, oh my god, close your ears because you can't hear about this, and, you know, sort of bullying me. That was really hard to take because these comments and these interactions are happening with your friends and your family members, and it's hard that, you know, you care about these people and they're treating you this way, uh, especially when you've all you're doing is just doing something for yourself. It has nothing to do with them. Uh, so that is frustrating, and... Honestly, the worst, worst feeling coming out of this vegan experience, this vegan journey so far, I I hate it <laughs> so much because I am someone that gets frustrated really easily, I get angry really easily, and I want to fight back because, of course, you are offending me, you are making me feel bad, but at the same time, uh, you know how it is, or you might not know, but if a vegan is angry, they get marked with that angry vegan stamp, 
and that's it. You are just the angry vegan. Don't approach her. Don't talk to her. She's just angry all the time because she's vegan. And that is not the case. I am angry because you are upsetting me about myself and my self-esteem. Uh, but of course, I, I, tend, I tend to hold back uh, when it comes to these kinds of confrontations because I do not want to be marked as angry vegan. <laughs> I am angry and I am vegan, but I'm not angry vegan, you know? <laughs> that is something that I really dislike, but I will say, since quarantine and, you know, since everybody's been cooking at home, not much people are going out to eat or take out or whatever, the conversation hasn't had to come up for a very long time. I don't really gather at all, so this doesn't apply anymore. I would have to have some awkward conversations about, well, what should we get for you? Can can you have this? Can you eat that? Or, don't worry, I got you. I made this like dish, but the dish is actually full of dairy and whatnot, and they just don't understand what vegan means. And so it's hard to have these conversations because I know that it hits their self-esteem a type of way, if, if that makes sense. Because sometimes people can feel like you are uh, questioning their intelligence if they don't understand uh, and that's of course not my intention but you know there is a tension there and I'm sure if you were looking at this video you know exactly what I'm talking about so I have had instances where I've met someone or I'm a friend with someone and I'm like well you know I'm actually vegan and they'll be like oh okay cool great let's you know get past this conversation it's not awkward anymore you're vegan Let's move on with our lives. If you are a friend of mine, if you are a family member of mine, and I have to disclose that I am vegan, be that person that's kind of like, okay, awesome, cool, and then just move along, because that, that takes out so much stress and awkwardness. <laughs> that's that for this part of the video. So now this section, we're gonna talk about my personal vegan staples, uh, my favorites, my go-tos, things that are always in my kitchen at all times, and I love them dearly, and they are part of so many different recipes. So let's get into that. First thing that I should mention is tofu. I love tofu so much. I can eat it every day, multiple times a day if I could, and I probably have. I love it as crispy tofu to put into salads, into noodle bowls, into rice bowls. I love tofu egg salad. I love tofu scramble. Uh, you can use tofu in tons of ways that you couldn't even imagine. You can even put it in a sauce if you use a, a silken tofu. So tofu is my number one favorite thing and it is a protein source. So if you're wondering about protein sources, tofu is your friend. Impossible Beef and Beyond Sausage. So these are vegan meat alternatives. The Beyond Sausage is more so for Ian. He does love those and he highly recommends those. The Impossible Beef is something that we have for an indulgent meal every once in a while. Uh, shout out to Sweet Simple Vegan for their vegan hamburger helper dish. It's a one pot meal and we make that maybe once every week or once every two weeks. It's so good and we use Impossible Beef for that. I also have a vegan dandan noodle recipe where I use Impossible Beef for that and it's just the best vegan ground beef alternative. Hands down, the best and I'm Quote me on that. Another source for protein or meat is just the brand Gardein. I have tried several proteins from them, like in the frozen aisle, um, and they are all delicious. I've had the crab cake, I've had chicken tenders, I've had different kinds of like chicken, I've had turkey, they are all fantastic. Gardein is a well-known brand in the vegan community for a reason, they are doing they're doing it well. Another protein that I personally like is tempeh, specifically tempeh bacon. Light Life does a smoky bacon sort of recipe that is fantastic and to me tastes a lot like bacon without needing to do like a faux meat sort of thing. Tempeh is a little less processed, so I love tempeh bacon on salads, like as a crumbly salad topper. I like it in BLTs, I like it in breakfast sandwiches, bacon, egg, and cheese, that is the bacon. Yes, you can still enjoy bacon, egg, and cheese as a New Yorker, as a vegan, and I love that. And then moving on to cheeses. I was a cheese freak before going vegan. I love cheese so much and I will admit, if it's one thing that I do miss from going vegan, it is cheese. There are just some cheeses that have not been replicated the same way. At least I haven't experienced it yet, so um, we'll see. But I do have favorites that I love so much, and they are 
so close to the real thing that I just have to recommend them. And that is Good Planet. This brand is not too well known, which is surprising because they do fantastic in the cheese department. Their shredded cheese and their cheese slices are to me, spot on, especially the cheddar and the American style that they do. So good. I use the cheddar shreds in the vegan hamburger helper. Incredible. And we use the slices in sandwiches, of course, and they melt really, really well. So definitely give Good Planet a try if they're in your area. Another brand that I love for cheese is Miyoko. <laughs> Miyoko is incredible and she makes fantastic cheeses and we personally like her mozzarella cheese. It's, it sort of looks like a, a circle and you can shred it, you can melt it, what have you. And we use that for pizza. We make homemade pizza now and that is our go-to mozzarella cheese for that. It is so good. It's also great on like ciabatta sandwich with roasted red peppers and tomatoes and basil. Oh my gosh, it is so good. It's not quite exactly like mozzarella like you don't get that fattiness from it, but you get that tang from it for sure. And it's so, so good. So I do recommend that. And I will say it's a little bit more on the pricier side, but if you're being indulgent, I do recommend that. And the last brand for a vegan cheese is Kite Hill. I went through a stage where I thought I could experiment with vegan cream cheeses. And y'all know I'm a New Yorker. I like my bagel and cream cheese. That is a food group that is extremely serious stuff in my diet and I needed a good cream cheese if I was gonna have a bagel and cream cheese. There are options here in New York City where you can get a bagel and cream cheese like 100% vegan at the store, but they use tofu cream cheese and it doesn't have the tang of cream cheese and that's what I love about cream cheese. So, Kite Hill is the way to go. They have that tang and it's made out of almond milk which blows my mind because usually uh, cream cheeses, vegan cream cheeses are made out of tofu or cashew. This one's made out of almond milk. So that's cool because I have a little weird situation relationship with cashews and Kite Hill has been the best cream cheese I've tried. Better than a ton of other brands that I've tried. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. I think it tastes almost exactly like cream cheese. That's just me. Okay, and it goes without saying, these things are naturally vegan. They are vegan for vegans and non-vegans alike, if you didn't know. But um, seasonings, noodles, pasta, rice, bread, all of these things are vegan. Um, sometimes bread is not vegan, depending on the kind that you get, but 90% of breads are vegan. Just check the label for the ingredients. Uh, but those things are vegan, whether you're vegan or not. So you can still enjoy all the carbs and all the good stuff. No worries. Another thing that I've discovered is extremely valuable in a vegan diet is nut butters and condiments. Those things are lifesavers. They are enhancers, flavor enhancers for everything that you make. So use them and they're healthy and they're lovely. So the nut butters that I use is almond butter. I, I usually only get the almond butter for some reason. I don't know why I've chosen that as my way to go, but I do <laughs> and it's delicious and you can use it for spreads, you can use it for sauces, you can make sauces creamy, you can make a nut sauce like, you know, sort of on, on the Thai flavor side. Uh, that's usually what we use the almond butter for and I also will have to shout out, although it's not a nut, I will shout out tahini. I have never used tahini before and now it is a staple. I use it every week. Tahini is magical. It's a creamy base, just like an almond butter, but it's not a nut. So you can make sauces creamy. We use it for our vegan dandan dan noodle recipe. Uh, we, we basically add it to anything that we want to make creamy and just add a little bit of fat uh, and healthy fats. So don't worry about the word fat. Uh, you can use it in salad dressings, all sorts of different things. It's delicious and you must give it a try. And then condiments. Condiments are crucial. I love condiments so much. So we've got vegan mayo and the, the naturally vegan stuff too, like mustard and ketchup and barbecue sauce. Make sure that it doesn't have honey in the barbecue sauce. But all sorts of condiments, sauces, salad dressings, all of these things make your dishes taste even better. Throw them on anything. It's healthy fats. It's healthy things that you're adding onto your meals. And if you don't care about health, whatever, it tastes delicious. So those things are crucial. Our fridge is jam packed with condiments and sauces. So highly recommend having that as part of your kitchen or pantry. 
And I forgot to say this before when I was talking about the cheeses, but dairy in general, we use almond milk here. I use unsweetened and no flavor almond milk because I add them to sauces and pasta dishes to make things creamy. And I also add just plain almond milk to my coffee. I don't like flavors in my coffee. However, Ian does. He likes his coffee on the sweeter side. So they there are plant-based creamers. There's almond milk creamers, coconut cream creamers, all sorts of plant milks. I, I don't even want to go there. There's so many and like you can find more plant-based milks than any other kind of milk. Let's just say that. And another dairy product is Miyoko's butter. Uh, her butter is my favorite butter ever. I've tried Earth Balance. I've tried the, what is it? The Croc something. Uh, Miyoko's is the best. It's expensive, but oh my goodness. I was somebody who would slather on tablespoons of butter on toast and just have that as a meal multiple times a day. I know, don't judge me, but I can still enjoy that. I can still enjoy the flavor of that with Miyoko's butter. She cultures it, so it has that tang. It's so, it's so good. The other day I sat down and I just ate my toast with butter slathered all over it and thought, what the heck does like real butter tastes like anywhere because this tastes exactly like butter. What is the point? It, it tastes exactly the same. And another dairy sort of thing is coconut milk or coconut cream. I don't really use it often, but it is a good staple to have if you want to make things extra creamy. Almond milk will do the job just fine, but if you want something really rich and velvety, maybe something like a mac and cheese sauce, coconut milk might be your thing. And if you don't mind a very subtle coconut flavor, it, it's definitely going to be your thing. Uh, it's also great for baking, so if you're into that, that can be something that's really helpful for you. Okay, we have made it to the end of this video. If you're still watching, bless your heart, let me know in the comments if you've made it this far. Uh, I know it's a little bit long, but I wanted to get as much information as possible for you at the beginning of January for your Veganuary. And like I said before, YouTubers and YouTube was one of the main resources for me when I was going vegan. So hopefully I can contribute to your journey. And I will link a lot of vegan YouTubers in the description of this video. There are so many that I love and they have really made a positive impact in my life. And that is all for today's video. I will say before you go that I am going to be a guest on a podcast. I can't believe I'm saying that. It's making me all giggly and happy, but <laughs> I will be talking about my full year as a vegan in more depth in that podcast. So I will keep you updated on my Instagram. Make sure you're following me on my Instagram if you want to know more about that. And hopefully I'll see you there when you listen to me on a podcast. I can't, I can't even register. I'm going to be on a podcast. That's so cool. Okay. <laughs> but I hope this was helpful. Please, please let me know in the comments if you are joining the Veganuary Challenge if you are going vegan this year and if you need help, if you need tips, if you need support, if you need encouragement, I am here for you. I am actually a certified vegan health coach. I don't know if a lot of people knew that, but I am. So please do send me a message. I am just here to support you and I'm so, so excited for you. <laughs> and that is all for me today. I will see you next week. Bye.